This problem says that you have n friends standing along a number line, each with a different hearing ability and walking speed. Your job is to place a speaker in the optimal position such that all your friends are close to it. For every friend, you are given their position, the minimum distance from which they can hear the speaker, and the time it takes them to walk one meter. Wherever you put your speaker, each of your friends will walk towards the speaker until they are within hearing range. If they start out in hearing range, they will not move at all. Your job is to place the speaker such that the sum of all your friends' walking times is minimized. You have a maximum of 200,000 friends and the number line is 1 billion meters long. Most obvious solutions then will be too slow to qualify. Given a point on the line where you put your speaker, let's call this total sum of your friends' walking time S. So our goal is to find the point that minimizes S. For our purposes, we will use an algorithm to calculate S using a basic O of N algorithm, simply looping through all of your friends and calculating how long it will take them. This seems like it would be too slow, but the key is to realize something about the graph of S. If I were to graph S at every point in the number line, it would look something like this. No matter what the input is, it's always going to be a V-shaped curve with a minimum S at the very bottom of the curve. It's impossible for this graph to resemble, say, a W, where there is a dip, but it is not the minimum. Because of this property, we can use a binary search to find the minimum point. If the point to the right of our speaker is greater, we know the minimum will be to the left. If the point to the left of our speaker is greater, we know the minimum will be to the right. We only reach the minimum once both the left and right sides are greater, because that is when we have reached the very bottom of the V. This results in an algorithm that runs in O of n log p time, where p is the maximum position of one of your friends. n is at most 200,000 and p is at most a billion, so this program will run in time. I will spend the next few minutes proving that this graph will always be v-shaped, but if you wish to skip to the programming part then go to this timestamp. So I discovered this proof while trying to find an algorithm to calculate s in less than O of n time. I didn't succeed, but my insight was that if you add up all W, or the time it takes to walk one meter, for all of the friends to the left of the speaker, and then add up all W for friends on the right of the speaker, you get a sort of pull on both sides. Let's say the sum of W on the left was 64, and the sum of W on the right was 56. That means if I move the speaker one meter to the left, each friend on the left will have to walk one less meter meaning s at this point will be 64 less than s at the previous point. However, each friend on the right will have to walk 1 meter more, meaning s at this point will be 56 more as well. This leads to a net decrease of 8 in s when I step to the left. The exact same thing happens if I keep stepping to the left, so I should obviously try to move as left as possible. The only exceptions to this are whenever the speaker encounters a friend's hearing range. If the speaker enters a friend's hearing range, the friend will no longer have to walk at all, meaning the pulls on each side will actually change. As well, if the speaker leaves someone's hearing range, the friend will have to start walking, meaning the pulls will again change. Let's take a look at both of these scenarios. Say to the left of the speaker is a friend who has a pull of 3, and all the friends combined to the left of that friend have a pull of 61, giving a combined left hand pull of 64. On the right of the speaker is a pull of 56. It is beneficial to step to the left at this point because it will lead to a decrease of 8 in S. However, let's look at what happens once we step onto the boundary of the friend's hearing range, meaning that friend will no longer have to walk. Once I step onto the boundary, nothing special actually happens to S, it still decreases by 8. However, if we look at the total pulls on each side, the pull of this friend has now dropped to 0, meaning the total left hand pull is now only 61. If I step to the left again, S will now only decrease by 5. So with this we can conclude that stepping into a friend's hearing range from the left will decrease the left hand pull. Now let's take a look at what happens when we leave a friend's hearing range. Say the left hand side has a pull of 61 and the right hand side has a pull of 56. However, the speaker is also sitting right on the left boundary of a friend's hearing range who has a pull of 3. If I take one more step to the left, this friend will now have to start walking, meaning their pull of 3 will be added on to the right hand pull of 56, giving a total right hand pull of 59. So to recap, if I am walking to the left, stepping into a hearing range decreases the left hand pull, and stepping out of a hearing range increases the right hand pull. It's easy to see that this will then necessarily lead to a V-shaped graph. Stepping to the left decreases S, which you can see on this graph, but it will only bring these pull values closer and closer together until they flip and the right hand pull becomes greater. 
At this point, if I keep stepping to the left, then s will increase until the graph looks like a v. The minimum point will then be the bottom of that v. There's only one more case to consider, and that's the case of a plateau. It turns out that if there's a flat section of the graph, then you have also reached the minimum. If we think about what a plateau means, it's when the left and right hand poles are equal to each other, so stepping in either direction does nothing. However, if I keep stepping to the left, I will either enter a hearing range, decreasing the left hand pole and making the graph curve upwards, or leave a hearing range, increasing the right hand pole and making the graph also curve upwards. No matter what you do to leave a plateau, it will always curve the graph upwards, meaning the plateau must be at the minimum. Now we can get into the programming. This program involves a binary search, which I won't be explaining in this video. If you don't know what it is, then you can watch some other videos and then come back here. The input can simply be taken as a 2D array of integer values. F here represents the values for the friends, where each row is a different friend and each column is a friend's position, walking speed, or hearing ability. I am also initializing high and low here to be used in the binary search, and I'll set them to be at the maximum and minimum positions of the friends. This is just so we don't start looking at position 500 million when the maximum friends position is like 20, but it's completely optional. You can instead just set these to a billion and zero respectively. I then make a standard binary search setup where I loop while the low value is less than the high value, and set mid every loop as the average between the two. Mid will represent the position of the speaker, and so its final value will be what we output. I then calculate the value of s at mid, as well as the values of s immediately to the left and right of mid, using a function. This is a really simple function, it basically just loops through every single friend, calculates the walking time, and adds them all up. The distance they have to walk is the absolute value of the speaker's position minus their position, and then minus their hearing range. If this value is greater than zero, it means they will have to walk some distance, so I add it to the total. If it is not greater than zero, it means the hearing range was greater than the difference in position, meaning that the speaker is within their hearing range and I don't have to do anything, they won't have to walk. Now that I have calculated the s values, if the value of s at mid is less than the values to the left and right, meaning we have reached the bottom of the v, we are done and exit the while loop. We can also exit if there is a plateau, meaning the s values are equal between s and mid and s towards the immediate right or left. Then we just have to check the cases where s is not at the minimum. If the value of s at this position is less than the value of s to the right, it means we're on the right side of the v so we have to move left. Therefore we should decrease high. If it's less than the one to the left, then it means we're on the left side of the v so we have to move right and increase low. That's all our cases covered, so we're actually done the binary search and can print out the answer. Here are the test cases on the CCC grader so you can see that the program works. Links to my code in this problem will be in the description, as well as a Dmoj link where you can test your own programs. That's about it, thanks for watching.